Okay. Good morning, people. I am very much happy that there are already 146 people in my channel. So if you're not yet a subscriber, I hope you actually subscribe to me as I will keep talking about Jose Rizal as Jose Rizal is one of my most... Uh, he is one of the people that I admire and he is the hero here in the Philippines so I wanted to talk about him and it's been a long time that I admire Jose Rizal and now I already discussed some time ago Jose Rizal's life and work and yes his parents and his sisters and one brother Pasiano yep Jose Rizal is the second male in the family of the Rizal family. But we all know Jose Rizal's uh, real surname is Mercado, which in Spanish meant market. So let's go now. We are going to talk about the women in Jose Rizal's life. So this means that we are going to talk about Jose Rizal's love life from and starting from his childhood. So let's go to the first slide now. Okay. Segunda Katigba. First love never dies unless your first love is already engaged to be married when you meet. That's when you have to let go really quick. It was the case of Jose Rizal and Segunda Katigbak, who is a Batangnya, whom Rizal met when he was only a 16 years old boy. So this means that Segunda Katigbak is really the first person that Jose Rizal admired, and yep, Segunda Katigbak seemed to be his first crush when he was a very young guy. We all know that when we become teenagers, we already feel love, and Segunda is definitely one of them. So where did Segunda Katigbak came to be. Who is she? So, nakita katigbaks were close to Rizal's grandmother and coincidentally, Segunda was at the grandmother's house when Rizal and Mariano arrived. And as we can see, it is a love at first sight. Segunda is a close friend of Olympia. Olympia is Serizal's sister and Ever since then, Rizal had always visited her in La Concordia College, and that's when they became very close. However, suddenly, Segunda was actually engaged to be married to a man who lived in her town, and that meant Jose Rizal has to stop in pursuing her. So, yep, she is the first love of our hero, Segunda Tegbak. Look how beautiful she is. So let's go to the next girl in Jose Rizal's life. Okay. Let's now talk about Leonor Valenzuela, the second woman in Jose Rizal's life. So her full name is Leonor Orang Valenzuela. She is Rizal's second object of affection, and she is literally the girl next door, or just a very good girl. They met when Rizal was a sophomore or second year medical student at the University of Santo Tomas, or parenthesis UST, during which time he also lived at 
Doña Concha Leva's boarding house in Intramuros, Manila. And around who was then 14 years old. So they met when Orang was only 14 years old and she is his neighbor. And during the courtship, they actually had past secret love letters, which he wrote using invisible ink made with water and salt. So at our time, we also have invisible inks, but they also had that before. So we can say that children really haven't changed much. And this is when we see that Rizal is still just is still also human. So when we talk about heroes, we don't have to make them as if they're not humans. Our heroes are also humans, and we are going to talk here how human she is as, he is as well. So, that's right. Okay. Third person, do you know Rivella? Rivera? So, yep, let's read the passage here first. So, Leonor Rivera and Jose Rizal lived a very tragic romance. They met when Rizal was 18 years old and Leonor was 13 at the boarding house of Rizal's uncle in Intramuros, Manila. Leonor was Rizal's second cousin, so it means Leonor is actually Rizal's uh, they are actually a bit related. And as we can see, it looked like a really good or a perfect love story in the beginning as he was very smart, a charmer, and she's a very pretty student who has a very beautiful vo voice. And she also plays a piano player. But then, even if they fell in love, but... As tragic love stories go, they had a lot of challenges as her parents disapprove of their relationship since at that time, Jose Rizal was dubbed a filibuster. And in his letters, Zal called Leonor Tainis to hide her identity. And as well, Pashano also disagreed with the idea as for him, it will be very bad to get her to to get Rizal to marry her af as he will actually leave her after they get married. So, but then, even if they were not able to get married, they continued to send each other love letters but as tragic love stories go their love letters always get intercepted by people so in 1890 Leonor wrote a wrote a letter to Jose Rizal saying that she was engaged to a, to marry a british engineer named Henry Kipping so that's the name of the uh man whom she was about to marry but then yep they were able to actually uh marry each other and they also had two children and the second childbirth caused her to pass away in 1893 so and the documents show that when he heard the news from narcissa narcissa he wasn't able to speak for days. And many experts believe that Jose Rizal immortalized her through the character Maria Clara in Noli Metangere. Yep, that's what happened. In And for me, Leonor Rivera is actually his uh, most deep, the deepest 
love story of our hero. She is really one of her most beloved women in her in his life. Okay, let's go. Another woman in Cerezel's life, Consuelo Ortega Ire. So, right? <sighs> Consuelo Ortega Ire was the daughter of Don Pablo Ortega Ire, who was mayor of Manila when Maria de la Tora Torre was the governor. And he showed affection towards her, but it wasn't that serious as he was still engaged to Lenore Rivera at the time. So they still love each other at that time. But he actually still loved the company of women. But during that period, he was too lonely and still yearning for the physical void left by Lenore. So that's when we actually see that even if she had, he had another woman in her life, in his life, he was still actually looking for Leonor Rivera. And another woman, a Japanese woman, Seiko Usui, they met in Japan. And she was affectionately called Osei-san at that time. Rizal doesn't that much know a Japanese language. And yep, they had a bit of a fling. They fell in love for a bit. But then, yep, it didn't last that much. But And they were able to talk to each other after that, and, but didn't last that much as he had to be as soon as, as soon as possible. So, right, that's what happened there. Gertrude Beck. In the same year, he began and ended his relations with Osei San, or junior then 27, went to London and met a woman named Gertrude Beckett, who is the eldest daughter of his landlord. Gertrude showered Rizal with all the love and attention of a girl who is hopelessly in love. She even assisted Rizal as he finished some of his popular sculptures, Prometheus Bound, The Triumph of Death Over Life, and The Triumph of Science Over Death. He called her Getty, she called him Petty. But all documents need to say one thing, the feelings weren't mutually shared. And in 1889, Jose Rizal left for London and left Getty, composite carving of the heads of the Beckett sisters. Marcelo Del Pilar, one of our heroes as well, and Rizal's friend said, Rizal left London to move away from Gertrude, whose idea of their relationship was more than what it really was the most tormenting kind and unrequited love. Okay. So that's when we see that Jose Rizal is also pretty much famous to our foreigners or also Filipinos. We had also love stories with a few Europeans, as at that time, as we know, he lived in the uh, Enlightenment era. So, yep, 19th century, when we say 18, actually, it was the 19th century. He lived in the 19th century. Okay, let's talk now about her, his love life with Suzanne Jacoby. Okay, with all the loneliness and anxiety from the turmoil of his country and from family, was even able to feel his resting moments, learning new things. When he arrived in Belgium in 1890, he lived at a boarding house 
that was run by two sisters whose name was Jacoby. The sisters had a niece named Suzanne. Okay. Osarizal made no mention of Suzanne when he wrote letters to his friends about his stay in Belgium. Rizal left the country in August that year. But Suzanne was heartbroken while Rizal continued El Filibusterismo writing for La Sola Solidaridad. As we remember, La Solidaridad is a newspaper, a propagandist newspaper, and worrying about his family back home. And it looked like they also wrote letters together. And Rizal may have replied once in 1891. And but then Rizal actually returned to Belgium to just finish El Filibusterismo and not for Suzanne. He stayed for a few months, left, and never returned. Next uh, woman in Jose Rizal's life, actually Nelly boasted almost married Jose Rizal. And yeah, she is a daughter of a very wealthy businessman named Eduardo boosted and a Filipina mother. So yep, she is a uh, half Filipina and their family house our hero when he stayed in Biritz on February 1891 at their winter residence, Villa Eliada on the superb French Riviera and Rizal and Nelly both are found or fond of fencing. Fencing is actually sword fighting and they always play the sports. But then when he heard that Leonor Rivera married Henry Keeping, we saw how Jose Rizal was actually very much heartbroken over the news. Then he considered to have a very colorful relationship with the highly educated, cheerful, athletic, beautiful, and morally upright Nelly, who in return gave also his uh, feelings and he had accepted his wedding proposal, but then because of family as well, and Nelly demanded him to convert to Protestantism, he refused, and that ended their relationship. Okay. The last of our uh, women is actually Josephine Bracken. It happened when they met at the time when Josephine Bracken and Jose Rizal are in the Pitan. As we remember, when Jose Rizal was in the Pitan, he is actually exiled because of his uh, works politically. Okay. Yep. And Josephine Bracken almost had a son which he named Francisco. But then, their son was born, was born and died just a few hours after that. But still, they named him Francisco. Okay. Many people still don't know why it, or if they actually were able to marry because at that time there are no priests who wanted to uh, get them married because as we all know he is called a filibuster and also an ereje in the spanish time here in the philippines so they weren't able to actually legally marry at that time but in my previous reads in other resources we just faced 
each other and married married each other in front of God and they considered it marriage but we actually don't know if it is actually correct but then we'll see if I read more about them if they were really able to marry each other so yeah that's he is actually she is actually the last woman in Hasarizal's life as at that time it was really very depressing as Osarizal is about to get executed and I believe I just theorized that it may have taken Josephine Bracken some uh, pressure and sadness as well as the man in her life is about to die and that may have caused her to uh, lose their son but I don't know we have to talk uh, talk to a doctor about that it was just my theory as a writer myself so it wasn't a very tough diagnosis if Josephine Bracken just lost her son by the pressure but I believe it may have also added to that so yeah Okay, so I am not just a teacher of as a result life works and writings. I'm also a big fan of our hero. So I wanted to talk about this in my diary as, yep, I consider myself a big fan of our hero. And I always wanted to share my passion about him as well. I wanted to talk about why I actually kept myself to study his life. And I will keep studying about him. I will even update this in the future if I get more subscribers in the future so I can talk more about his life so if you have watched this and you have finished this whole presentation thank you thank you thank you thank you so don't forget to subscribe and also i hope you take that notification bell below and comment down what i can still improve as a teacher vlogger so yep thank you please subscribe please and hit that notification bell thank you thank you bye and yep i'm still going to talk about jose Rizal next but then i'm going to talk about this yep we are going to talk about this book I know that it's a bit like that. So yeah, the first Filipino. Uh, it was actually written by uh, Leon Maria Guerrero. So I'm going to read a bit of the passages here of this book to you so i hope you actually like this book as well and we are going to study this book together so yeah thank you very much for watching please subscribe and i hope you keep following me as i keep talking about jose rizal as my first educational continuous vlog so thank you very much thank you and goodbye.